Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress tutorial. In this lesson, we'll cover the blog basics of theme development. Or in other words, we'll learn how to add the date for each post and also how to format the text in any format that you would like. We'll learn how to output the author for each post and make their name a link to the relevant author archives page. And we'll also learn how to output the categories assigned to each post and make the terms links to the relevant category archive pages. So we're gonna cover quite a bit in this video, so let's dive right in. Now looking at the finished product isn't very helpful or educational. So behind the scenes, I just removed all of the code that was outputting the date, author, and categories. And now we can start from square one and write the code together. So let's get started. Let's take a look at our code. In this case, we're working with index.php of the theme folder. Now our first goal is to output the date below the blog title, excuse me, the post title. So underneath this heading level two, which is outputting the title, we'll create some new code. A paragraph, you can give it a class of anything we would like. I will choose post info. Okay, and we wanna output the date. So that means we need to drop into PHP. And now WordPress has a function named the time. Now it might seem instinctual to use the function called the date, but when you're working inside the loop and you're outputting the date for multiple posts and you're looping through, you actually wanna use the time function. This function, the time, accepts a parameter known as a format string. And that's how we define how we want the date to be displayed because there's many different ways to display it. So for example, if I say mdy month, day, year with slashes, that's exactly what we get with leading zeros, month, day, year. Well, what if we would like to actually spell out the date instead of numbers? So you can see that we have these different codes at our disposal. So the code to actually spell out the month is uppercase F. The code for the day without a leading zero is J. And then what if I want the suffix? So for second, it would be ND. For third, it would be RD. For fourth, it would be TH. Uh, the code for the suffix is capital S, comma, the year with four digits. So if we refresh, we can see that that's exactly what we get. So it's really just a matter of Googling PHP date formatting or PHP date strings. And then it's up to you to decide how you wanna output the date, but you have a lot of different options at your disposal. And for the record, you can output the time, not just the date, because remember the function is named the time. So if I paste in this string, you can see that GIA, that will output the actual time the post was published. So that's a quick explanation of how to format the date text for each post. Moving on, let's review how to output the author name for each post. So in our code, directly after the date, we'll create a separator, drop back into PHP, and WordPress has a function named the author. It's that easy. So you can see we're now outputting my name uh, because I am the author of all of these posts, but for some websites, you'll have multiple authors all contributing content, so it's useful to output the author name. Now, we'll probably wanna say by and then the name. Uh, but let's take it one step further. Let's make the name a link that takes you to an author archives page with all posts by only that author. So back in our code, we'll wrap this the author function in a hyperlink. For now, I'll just include the pound sign. We're gonna remove that in just another second. Okay, so now that the HTML is in place, we wanna get rid of this pound sign and we're going to use another WordPress function named get author posts URL. Now, this code alone will not do the job. We also need to pass along some sort of parameter in these parentheses so that this function knows which author to get. So we, we need to tell it, get the author of the current post that we're running the loop through. So in order to do that, we'll say, get the author meta, get their ID. So now, once we pass along, and remove this for just a second, we wanna pass along an ID number into this function, get author post URL, so it knows which URL to get. So I'll paste that back in. So now if we refresh, we can see that the name is a link, and if you click it, 
it takes you in the URL bar, you can see that it takes you to the name of the site slash author slash their username. So then you will only see posts by that author, which is really useful if you have a website with multiple contributing authors. Now that the author name and link is complete, let's focus on adding links to the categories that each post was assigned to. So directly after this author code, create a separator. We'll say posted in, and then we're gonna to need to drop into PHP because we wanna output all of the different categories that the post is assigned to. WordPress has a function named get the category, which will do most of the heavy lifting for us. So this function will return an array with all of the categories assigned to a post, because remember, you can have multiple categories assigned to a post. Now let's store this array in a variable. So we'll call our new variable categories. We'll store this array's value in it. And then we're just gonna create a few other variables. So separator, uh, I will separate the categories if there's more than one of them with a comma and a space, okay? And then we're gonna create another variable named output. And we'll initialize the variable with just nothing, just an empty value. Okay, so now that we have these three variables set up, we have everything we need. We just need a bit of PHP logic now to sort of loop through the different categories in this array and output the appropriate text. So we'll start with an if statement just to make sure that our array exists uh, because if the array is empty, then obviously we don't really need to run anything. So we'll say, if there is content in this categories array, then do something, okay? And the thing that we want to do is loop through something, so for each. So depending on how many items are in this array, because we are not sure, we want to loop through it once for each item in the array. So we'll say uh, for all of the categories, loop through each one uh, with the phrase category. So now we can use that keyword inside this bracket and this bracket. So we can say output period equal. So what this allows us to do, period equal, is add on to a variable instead of overwriting a variable. So we started out with nothing just to initialize the variable. And now we're using this variable as sort of a dumping ground. Uh, each time we loop through Let's say there was five categories in this array. Each time we loop through, we're adding on different text to the output. And then outside of this for each loop, so down here, we're going to echo out the output. Okay, so hopefully the structure is starting to make sense. We're sort of tacking on to this variable, and then once we're done looping, we just want to output it. So that's what we'll see in our web browser. So we'll start simple. Let's just output the name of the category, and then later we'll worry about turning that name into a link. So we'll say category. Now remember, this keyword category, we can use that almost as the phrase this if you've done a lot of JavaScript programming. Now that we're in this for each loop, we can use category to reference to the current item that we're being looped through. So we'll say category, and we just want the category name. Okay. And then also let's tack on uh, the separator, space in our comma. So we'll say separator. Okay, so now if we refresh, we can see that it's saying posted in and then the name and then a comma. And obviously it doesn't make sense yet if there's only one category. Uh, but if we scroll down a bit, you can see that this post has multiple categories. So it says posted in guest piece, comma, opinion, comma. So now we just need to define, further define our logic uh, to do two things. A, we want these categories to actually be links to category archives, not just text. And then second, we need to remove the comma from the end of the text. So for example here, let's keep the comma after the first phrase, but we need to remove it from the final phrase. So let's start with the easy task first. Let's remove the comma at the very end. So down here where we're actually echoing or outputting uh, our output variable, all we need to do is use a PHP function named trim. So we'll wrap this output variable in the trim function. And we can pass along an option, uh, separator. So now this function is going to take our output and then it's gonna remove at either the very beginning or the very end, anything that resembles our separator symbol. So in this case, it'll look for comma space. 
So now if we refresh, we can see that it removed the comma at the very end of our string. Okay, so now let's worry about making uh, the categories an actual link that you can click on. Let's hop back over to our code. Okay, so we need to customize this line a bit to turn it into a link. So what we really need to do is output a bit of HTML. Okay, but then we obviously want the name uh, to be within this link. So we can move this. Sit right about there. So now if we refresh, we can see that each uh, category is a link, but obviously we don't have a URL in the link yet. We just have a pound sign. So now our task is to make this an actually relevant URL. So we will remove the pound sign and add in a bit of dynamic code. Okay, so our code will sit here. We'll say get the category link and then we'll pass along the ID of the current category that we're looping through. So remember we can use that phrase or that keyword category because we're looping through it. Excuse me, we're looping through the array and say category, we really just want the ID number. So essentially we're just passing along a numerical value into this get category link function and then it will return the URL for us. So now if we refresh, can see that if I click on one of these links, if I click on opinion, it takes us to a page in the URL bar, the URL of our site, slash category, and then the name of the category. And then this page will only show posts of the opinion category. And then if we go back and we click on news, it'll only show posts from the news category. So to recap, we now have the date, the author with a link to the author archives, and the category with a link to the category archives. Let's close out this lesson by focusing a bit on the styling. So let's remove the space between the title and this info text, and let's also make the info text smaller and maybe a lighter color, so it's not as prominent as the body text. So we'll hop over to style.css. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom, create a new section or comment named post styles. Let's say post h2 let's remove that margin for the title because we can use the margin for the date text or the info text instead and let's make the text a bit smaller and let's make it a little bit lighter so it's not as prominent and also how about the links instead of being blue let's also make them gray So now if we refresh, we can see that that looks a lot better. So now it's sitting next to the title, it's a bit smaller, it's gray, and our links don't stand out as much, but you can still tell that they're links. So that brings this lesson to a close, but let's segue into our next video topic. Remember, if we click on the author archives, it takes us to a page with only posts from that author, but wouldn't it be nice if we had some sort of title above these posts that said, author archives. And then if we clicked on this category, wouldn't it be nice if it said in a large title, news archive or some sort of custom title so that it didn't look exactly like the home page or just a standard list of posts. So in the next lesson, we'll learn how to use the file in our theme folder named archive.php to do just that. So thank you very much for watching this lesson. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for more WordPress and web development tutorials. Thanks. Bye.